Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to add the ability to switch between a bar chart and a line graph by making a generic chart visual interface. Let's get started. Alright, so we previously converted our line graph into a bar chart. In here we have commented our code, so right now the graph type is hard-coded into our script. Now let's find a way to be able to display as either a bar chart or a line graph. We're going to go down here and create a new subclass for each of our display types. Let's start off with a bar chart. Create a private class and name it bar chart visual. So we want to copy the bar chart specific code into this class. So in here, the create bar function, let's dump it in here. And as you can see, we got an error because we need the graph container. So let's store a rect transform for our graph container. And we're going to create a public constructor. In that constructor, let's receive our graph container and set the internal value. Okay, so this subclass now has everything necessary to display the bars. Since we want to have multiple visual types, let's create a generic function to display the value in our graph. We're going to make a public void and say add graph visual. In order to have a generic function to add the graph visual, we're going to send it a vector2 for our graph position and a float for our graph position width. We want to keep a good level of abstraction, so we're going to give it the width of the graph position rather than a bar width. So in here, we're going to create our bar as we did previously. So go up here and grab our bar code, place it in here, and we're going to modify the return type to game object so we can return this game object. For our position, let's set the graph position, and for the graph position width, let's send it this one. Okay, so now using this function, we should be able to display the bar graph as previously. So back up here into our show graph code, let's create a bar chart visual. So bar chart visual, bar chart visual equals new bar chart visual. I'm going to give it the graph container. And in here, I'm going to use it. Instead of creating a bar like previously, let's go into our visual and do add graph visual. I'm going to send it the vector two and this right here. Okay, the setup is correct, so let's test it out, and it should be displaying the exact same thing as before. Yep, there you go, I can see my bar chart as normal. Great. Now let's add some customization for our visuals. So here on the constructor, let's receive a color for our bar color, and a float for the bar width multiplier. And we're going to store it as member variables. And in here, when we're creating a bar, let's go into our game object .get component of type image and set the color to our bar color and multiply the bar width by our bar width multiplier. So now up here, when we're creating our bar chart visual, let's add some custom things. So let's send a color.green and bar width multiplier, let's say 0.8F. So the bars will be slimmer and they won't be green. Yep, there it is. The bars are now green and slightly thinner. Our graph is now easily customizable. So now that the bar chart visuals are working, let's make the line graph visuals. So we're going to use the same pattern that we did. So we're going to go down here and create a new subclass. Let's call it line graph visual. Inside, we're also going to need the rect transform for our graph container, which we'll receive on a constructor. And let's go up here and copy paste the dot connection and the create dot code down here into our class. Now we also need a private sprite for our dot sprite and get that in our constructor. Okay, so now let's create a function with the same signature as this one. And we're going to copy paste the code that we were using in here. So this code right here, we're going to place it down here. And first of all, we need a game object to store the previous. So private game object for our last dot game object, which will be known by default. We're going to create it using our graph position. We don't need the position width, but we want the signature to be the same as up here. 
and since we need to return more than one value in order to clean up our graph we need to return the dot and the dot connection so let's return a list of game objects instead of just one game object so let's return the game object list and make the game object list in here. And let's also switch the return value up here to keep the same signature and just going to return a new list of game object with just this object. Okay. Now let's go up here and when we're adding, instead of adding like this, let's do add range since we're receiving a list as a return value of the add graph visual, but we're actually going to use our line graph visual. As new line graph visual, give it the graph container and give it the dot sprite. Let's comment out the bar chart visual. And here, instead of making the bar chart, let's use the line graph visual and we're using the same method signature. So right now we should be able to display our line graph again. Okay, let's see. And there you go, we are back to displaying a line graph. So again, let's add some customization to our line graph. So down here in our constructor, let us receive a color for the dot color and another color for the dot connection color. Down here, let's apply our color. So go into game object, get component image color equals our dot color and in here let's set the color to our dot connection color and back up here when we create let's give it some colors so for the dots let's make them green and for the dot connection color let's give it a transparent white as previously since that is the easiest way to view it Yep, there it is. The dots are green, the others are transparent. Okay, great. So we now have both visuals, each in their own specific class that we can swap easily. So now let's make our show graph function receive which visual it will actually use. So here on our parameters, we want to receive the visual type. So in order to receive multiple possible types, let's use an interface. So let's go down here and we're going to create a private interface name it I graph visual. Now in that interface, we're simply going to have the method that we created in here. This is the method that this interface needs to implement. And we're going to use this interface on both of our subclasses. And on our show graph, this is what we're going to receive in here, graph visual. And in here, instead of using all of this, we're going to use the graph visual and add our graph visual. And finally on our start method in here, let's call it with the visual. So let's use the constructor we built in here, go up here, make an I graph visual, graph visual and make this one. And that's what we're going to use. So let's see if we're displaying the line graph visual as previously. Yep, there you go. It is displaying the line graph visual. Okay, and now just for fun, let's add a function periodic to swap the visual every half a second. So make a function periodic dot create. The function periodic is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from untcodemonkey.com. So in here we take a action and then a timer. So let's say every half a second, we want to call this action and this action will swap the visuals. So let's say this is the line graph visual and let's make the bar chart visual which we're going to use what we built in here and let's also go down here and clean up all of this code get rid of all of these comments okay and now in here let's make a bull use bar chart let's set it to true if use bar chart Okay, so we're going to trigger this function every half a second and the first time it triggers it's going to use a bar chart, so display with the bar chart visual and then it's going to swap it out and the second time it runs it's going to display the line graph and so on and so forth. So let's test and we should be able to easily see the visuals changing. There's the line and there's the bar, line, bar, line, bar. Okay, awesome. We can now switch the visuals very easily. 
So there you have it. We have successfully created different visual types that we can apply to our graph. In the next video, we're going to add tooltips to display the exact value of each data point. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.